The Tiempo Legend 7, not a speed boot, but still fast as f What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Nike Tiempo Legend 7 Elite. They added the Elite to the name now because this is part of the new naming scheme in the new Fast AF colorway. Now, this is a really good looking shoe. I think it's one of my personal favorite colorways we've seen of the Legend 7 so far. And of course, with its new name, people want to know if anything's different. Well, spoiler alert, nothing's really different, but it is a new colorway. And I still want to talk about the Legend 7 now Elite because I think it's a really, really good shoe. It's actually my personal favorite out there right now. I know a lot of people always want to know what boot that is. And honestly, I think if you're looking for something that has a kangaroo leather upper, it's hard to justify buying any other shoe right now. So if you want to learn more about what these have on offer, including how they fit and feel on feet, please stick around and watch the entire video. And if you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can click the little pop up in the corner of the screen or the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. We'll be able to pick these up below their normal $230 retail price. Here's a look at the label on the box. Now you can see they do list the men's and women's equivalent size and of course the new name legend 7 elite fg of course referring to firm ground which this is the firm ground version of the shoe for all you string bag enthusiasts this is the string bag that they come with now of course like the rest of the fast af pack this features the same black white and orange color scheme but unlike the rest of the pack the orange is kind of kept mostly to the bottom of the shoe so you don't see it revealed until you actually start running there's a hint of orange right here that you'll see from the outside in the form of the fly wire cables. But other than that, there's just a little bit of orange right here. When that stretches out, you'll see that better when they're on feet. And of course, there's an orange pinstripe on the inside of the heel liner. You wouldn't see that when you're actually wearing them. The rest of the upper is pretty much solid black. So you have black kangaroo leather, black for the fly knit here across the front. And then of course, the fly knit that's actually running through the midfoot area just has a matte black uh, Nike skin covering on top, basically a, a fuse material, uh, which looks really, really good as well. So you have the matte black with a slight gloss of the leather itself. And then you're gonna notice the Nike swoosh has this kind of rainbow color changing effect to it, even though it's black, which I think looks really cool. It's a nice little extra detail that you don't really see unless you have the shoes in person. And of course they kept things very simple with the white outline for the Nike swoosh, the Tiempo branding there on the back, and then all the little tech specs that they now list on the upper are also white in color. So overall, I really like this particular colorway, probably my favorite of all the Tiempo legends so far. I'm gonna go over all the basics of what this has on offer in the video, but if you wanna learn a little bit more about them or you just wanna see the shoes in action, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen to my playtest video. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to go ahead and check it out. Now, I think a lot of people look at the Tiempo Legend 7 and automatically kind of view it as a classic old school style shoe with a kangaroo leather upper. But in all honesty, it's actually one of the more complex designs out there right now. Think about this. If we name all the tech specs just really, really quickly, you have kangaroo leather for the main part of the upper. The back part of the upper is made from a fly knit base with a Nike skin, basically a fused material on top acting as a shield for that material. Then you have an internal support cage behind the leather. And then behind that, you have what's called a fit mesh liner in the four foot toe box area as an extra reinforcement layer for the sake of responsiveness. On the topic of responsiveness, you're also gonna find fly wire cables at the top three lacing positions on either side that basically run on a diagonal into the midfoot heel area, pressing your heel into the back of the shoe for the sake of lockdown and also reinforcing the midfoot, making this easily the most responsive leather shoe on the market right now. Not to mention that it also has what is basically a one piece construction with the middle filled in with this fly knit material that has this folded design to match the thickness of the rest of the leather on the upper. When you also take into consideration all conditions control ACC from Nike, which personally I don't think does anything at all, you have a lot going on, on what a lot of people view as a very simple shoe, it's far from simple. Now, as many elements that are happening all on one shoe here with the Legend 7, the sensation of wearing it is actually that of a very simple design, which I think is what's so great about what they've done here. It has the feel of a more traditional kangaroo leather shoe. Yes, it has the modern fit, and it's definitely a lot more responsive than what you would expect from this style of shoe. But when you have them on your feet and you're just running around or even walking, it feels like a classic leather shoe. So the softness, the comfort, the touch that leather can only provide is exactly what you get here and there's a good amount of it as well. It pretty much fills all the areas of the foot that you would want to be covered in leather. And the quality is also pretty excellent as well. So nothing to complain about there. The internal support cage, the fit mesh liner, I would say is fairly noticeable, but you get used to it pretty quickly. And then the fly wire cables, 
all combine to make this shoe very responsive, but without taking away from that softness or flexibility, which I think is really important. And something that Nike didn't do quite as well in the past when they tried to innovate on the Tiempo Legend. The Legend 4 Elite comes to mind. It had the Flywire cables, but the shoe as a whole actually felt quite stiff, despite it being made from such a thin, soft kangaroo leather material. The laces run through the middle, so you get really good lockdown when you pull everything tight, especially because of those Flywire cables. And with this one piece construction to the upper, which it's not a true one piece, because obviously it's not filled in with leather all the way across the top of your foot, but you have this fly knit material that is attached on both sides. What's great about that is you don't have any overlapping materials this way and there's nothing to shift from side to side. A lot of people complain about that with a traditional tongue design. You do not have that issue here on the Legend 7 whatsoever. Again, ACC as a wet control feature, honestly, I don't buy too much into what it actually does or if it's having any benefit at all. Some people think it's a really big deal though. That I'm just gonna leave down to personal preference and a matter of opinion. Uh, the fly knit running through the heel area, Cool idea, honestly, is it noticeable? No, this doesn't feel like knitted upper at all. It really could have been a regular synthetic and have felt exactly the same. It does have a low cut, which this is basically one of the only top end models from Nike now that is available in a low cut variation, or at least one of the ones that is actually still popular. Most of the low cuts from the other lines aren't quite as popular anymore. I guess you could make an argument for the Vapor, but this does not have a mid cut option at all, which I don't think is a bad thing. Will we see it in the future? We'll see, I guess. Um, it has a really, really nice heel liner, probably the best heel liner of every any shoe on the market, in my opinion. It's a synthetic suede material, then you have this extra padding in the form of these little bumps running along the side. So the amount of padding is excellent and the lockdown is actually quite good as well. Very, very comfortable, minimal break-in time. The insole, fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. It features the Nike Grip material on the surface. That is the Nike Grip aspect. A lot of people get confused about this. And again, I think the Nike Grip in this particular situation is just pure marketing. This feels like a regular mesh. If that Nike Grip branding was not there, you would not be able to tell that this was anything special at all. And honestly, it doesn't feel like anything special when you're wearing it either. So. Again, I wouldn't buy too much into this particular feature of the shoe. However, the insole is actually pretty decent. It's a yellow foam with pour-on foam inserts, inserts here in blue, in the heel, as well as in the forefoot, giving you that little bit of extra padding that a standard foam or a single layer of foam wouldn't necessarily provide. As far as internal is concerned, this is something that I don't always talk about in the videos. You are actually going to find a little bit of a grip texturing in the heel as well as in the forefoot. Oh, that's a little bit more difficult to show you on the base of the sole where the insole is actually slit, sitting and that's gonna prevent the insole from sliding, which is actually a pretty cool element. And then you're also going to find the sole plate, which is made from a really nice plastic material. It's got good flexibility to it. This is what they call their hyper stability sole plate, which they give names for all these sole plates, even though they're technically all the same materials and don't really vary all that much in terms of overall design, but it feels quite solid. It's got good flexibility to it, which I think is what you want with this style of an upper. Any kind of kangaroo leather shoe, you want it to be relatively flexible and natural on your feet, which this definitely does provide that sensation. And as far as the firm ground stud pattern is concerned, it's mostly conical studs in the forefoot. You have these kind of chevron style bladed studs taken from the mercurial line here at the front of the shoe. So you get that little bit of extra aggression and then it's all bladed studs in the heel. Again, kind of mercurial-esque studs at the very base. So it's probably the most aggressive stud pattern we've ever had on the Tiempo line, but it actually works really, really well and still has that traditional sensation to it. Honestly, a really good stud pattern for firm natural grass, although I would not recommend wearing this or this particular shoe on artificial grass, mainly because it's not really made for it. If you're playing on AG surfaces, I would recommend buying the AG Pro version of the Legend 7 Elite. The only other thing to talk about in regards to this shoe is the weight. And I think people, given the style that it is, would expect it to weigh a lot more than it actually does. But in a size 9.5 US, the Legend 7 Elite weighs in at 7.2 ounces, which is just as light, if not lighter, than most top end models from the Nike brand, and just as light, if not lighter, than most top end models from other brands as well, including some of which that are actually marketed as speed boots. So if you're worried about getting a shoe like this because you thought it was gonna feel bulky or sloppy or heavy on your feet, that is not the case at all. You're getting the experience of the softness that a kangaroo leather can offer, but you're also getting responsiveness, pretty aggressive traction, and a nice lightweight feel as well. So again, the Legend 7 is not your typical kind of old school, I guess, heritage style boot. It has the classic material, but it has all the modern tech as well. 
So as you can see, I swapped out the stock black laces for some black and white stripes reflective SR4U replacement laces. These actually just came out and they look really, really good on this particular shoe with the black and white accents you already have on the upper. So if you're looking for a pair of SR4U replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, the Legend 7 is really, really comfortable out of the box. However, it is a leather shoe, so it does still require some break-in time. The leather will soften up and form to the shape of your feet despite having all the extra reinforcement after a couple hours of wear time. As with pretty much any leather shoe, the more you wear them, generally the more comfortable that they tend to get. That's why so many people who consistently wear leather shoes continue to stick with leather because nothing really feels and fits the way a well broken in leather soccer cleat does. As far as the overall comfort is concerned, the sole plate's got good flexibility to it. The leather feels nice and soft. The heel lockdown in general fit in the heel because of that heel liner, I think is absolutely fantastic. You're unlikely to have too many issues with the break-in process. It's gonna be comfortable out of the box, but they will get more comfortable as you wear them in. As far as width is concerned, they have a decent amount of width to them. The tightest part on this shoe is gonna be the four foot toe box area, and that is by design. It is leather, it is going to stretch. So you don't want it to be too wide from the get-go because it could overstretch if that's the case. These will not overstretch on you. I've yet to see anybody complain about that particular issue and that is largely due to all the reinforcement that it has so for the most part in terms of width i think these will be suitable for most people probably the widest shoe on offer from the four main lines from nike right now if that's something that you were wondering and as far as sizing is concerned it does run a half size small so normally the mercurial and hypervenom line they run true to size whereas the magistas and the tiempos they run a half size small. So instead of wearing my usual size nine US, I bump it up to a 9.5 and the fit and the length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. Anyways guys, that is it for my review of the Fast AF Nike Tiempo Legend 7 Elite. Highly recommended, my personal favorite shoe for the reasons that I explained in this video. Again, if you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $230 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave those down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed the video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear you can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well other than that guys hope you enjoyed the video as always thanks for watching